There's a brand new way to quickly change colors inside of Photoshop and that's called Adjust Colors. Let's have a look at it right now. Adobe has updated the hue saturation. It's been around forever, but now we've got some brand new features and functionality and I want to show it to you. First of all, I just want to let you know this is just in the beta version of Photoshop right now. So in order to access that, you go to Creative Cloud. You're going to choose Apps, choose Beta, and you're going to see Photoshop and then just download it, install it. And at least on the Mac platform, this can run side by side with the installed version. Windows, somebody drop a comment and let me know if you can run both. All right, let's just have a look at the big picture workflow and then I'm gonna go in and explain the different features and changes. So you'll notice the taskbar, which is available under Window, Contextual Taskbar, and you'll see Adjust Colors. So when we click on here, so what it does is it picks the six dominant colors inside of that image. And I'll explain that a little bit more to you in a moment. But say we want to change the color of this red. We're going to click on the red and then you're going to see three options. We, let's just change the hue and we'll talk about what all the different options do in a moment. But notice as, as I change that hue, it is changing the color of that motorcycle. Now it's not perfect. Notice there's a little red fringe around here and also it's picking up red on the wheel. We can easily fix that, but let's talk about what's happening. When I click on here, what it does is it creates a hue saturation adjustment layer. And this also enables the hue saturation. Let me drag out the properties panel so you can see it. Now I'm gonna explain all the changes and everything in a moment, but you'll notice that these colors are reflected here, exactly the same colors and there's the slider. But you can't fine tune it from the taskbar, but we can here. Notice we've got the sliders and faders here. So if we look at this image, the top here is the before colors. And the bottom here is the after colors. So you can see that red has become blue. So if we look across and we can see that there's red in there that we don't want. If we look at the after color, we can see that here's what used to be red is now blue. So look in there, we've got that red that we don't want. So all we need to do is just pull this over and notice as we do that, we're rolling the red away and now we're getting closer to what we want. Notice here, we've got red around that. So we can also go in here and we can refine the area that's been selected by just simply dragging that slider across and notice now we've been able to modify that. I was actually first alerted to this because one of our viewers let me know that the hue saturation was working strangely. So let's go into the hue saturation adjustment layer here. And their complaint was, hey, they went in and then did the hue, but instead of the whole image changing, just some of the image changed. And that's because of these colors up here. If you click the button on the far left, now the hue will shift the entire image like before. But let's talk about these colors. So right now, by default, we have six colors and the preset here says default. And these are the six primaries. That's red, green, and blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. So those are the six primary colors inside of Photoshop. Those used to be in a dropdown. So if we go under the master, you're gonna see there's the six primaries right there that we'd select. I'll be honest, I never did use those. I always use this tool here to select the exact color that I want. Back in beta, we still have that option. If we look at the picker tool, it's right there. And now we can click on the exact shade that we want and we can adjust it. All right, so we can also go down here and we can choose prominent colors under the preset. And this is going to detect the six most prominent colors in the image. And this is going to be quite similar to what we're getting with the picker tool. However, sometimes when you have, see like this gradiates from a darker to a lighter tone, I still like to use this particular tool because it means I have to do less refining down here. Now, when we select a color, there's three things that change, the hue, saturation, and the lightness. The hue is the color. So that could be red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, indigo, right? So that is the color itself. The saturation is the amount of color. So if we increase it, we get more color. If we reduce it, we get less until we go all the way down to 
grayscale or black and white. In fact, I'll keep it here for now so we can see how the third option works without the distraction of the color. The lightness, and this is by the way, is HSL. So the lightness enables us to lighten those colors, and this is how we would convert a color to white, or we can darken it, and this is how we would convert a color to black. If we wanted to really hit that color, we're going to choose Colorize. Now notice when I hit Colorize, it changes everything to one color. And this is where we can choose the hue. So maybe we want a blue. How much of that blue do we want? Saturation, very little, very much. So let's put it about here. And now this is where the lightness comes in. Because if you notice, areas like the white area here, if I was to hide this for just a moment, See, that's a white area. Notice it's not really getting changed at all, is it? This is what the lightness is for. I've seen some people use it to lighten and darken the image. Do not use it for that. That's not its purpose. Its purpose is to force color into areas where there are no colors. So for example, this is pure white. You cannot add color. But if I darken this, boom. Notice now, I can put color in there. I can make it any color I want, and as I darken it, I intensify that color. Obviously, I'm going across the whole image. You'll be doing this locally. Okay, what about these darker areas in the images? Let's hide this for a moment. And maybe down here. In fact, if we zoom in a little bit, how easy is it to add color to here? Notice as I change the saturation, it's difficult to get color. We can get a little bit in there, but not right up here in the shadow area. Watch as I change that hue, it's not really changing. But watch this. Take the lightness, increase it, boom. Now we've got solid color, and we can easily change that color. So this is giving us a ton of control over our colors. Let's just talk about this area here. So how would we select that? If we want to select those colors, we could choose prominent colors. And we can make an adjustment here. Or we could use the finger or we can use the eyedropper and click on a specific color. Notice as I apply that, it highlights that color. And this range changes. So let's just change the hue of this to something different. All right, we've got colors in here that we don't want to be affected. Now we can use this range slider manually or we can use these eyedroppers. If I hit the little minus and I say, hey, I don't want her shirt changed. We click on it. Notice that that takes it away. It makes a little adjustment, maybe on the face here. Once again, it's making an adjustment. And notice what it's doing is clamping that in. So as we spread this, notice it encompasses more of the image. As we contract it, we start to remove colors from there. And now we're starting to target more specific colors. All right, let's do a practical use of this now. Okay, so the fastest way to work with this is to go up, click on Adjust Colors. This creates a hue saturation adjustment layer, populates our properties panel, and gives us the prominent colors in the image. We know we want to change the red, so we click on the red, and there's the same hue saturation and lightness. So we can change the hue to the color we want, Maybe that blue. Do we want it more saturated, like a very vibrant blue? Or do we want it less saturated, maybe going into a softer blue, maybe even a gray? If we're going in here, we can also change the lightness. So if we want to go into like a dark blue, we could do that. Or we want to go into more of a, you know, a lighter pastel kind of a blue, we could do that. So you can literally go in here, get any color you want. So if we want a nice bright yellow, we go there, adjust the lightness until we get the right tone. So we can dial in our specific color we want there. But this is not going to do the whole thing for us. So let me undo this. The other way to do this is to grab the eyedropper, which exists here too. Then we go into the red, because there could be different shades of that red in here. I'm going to choose the diffuse value, which is here, which is not going to be affected by highlights or shadows. The auto feature might not pick up on that. So let's click there and notice, yes, it was a slightly different red. So let's click on this. Now we're going to go into our hue. Let's grab a nice blue color and drop the saturation down, maybe just a little bit. All right, so we've got our blue. Notice we've also picked up skin tones. So now we go under here, under our properties, and we can grab our minus tool 
click on the face, see how that starts to preserve some of the skin tones. And then if we look here, we see the reds are going into the blues, which is not what we want. So let's pull it back a little bit more. See how we can start to preserve more of that. So we're moving that to the right to include more blue. Now, as we are, notice we're starting to get a little bit in the face and in the hand. That's okay. I could have started for a woman with a blue dress and it would have made it really easy because the skin tones wouldn't have been affected, but this is more real world. Now, notice when you make an adjustment, it reflects up here in the taskbar. It also reflects in hue saturation. You can see the color before and the color after. You also see this little dot underneath, which shows the colors that have been adjusted. Because we could go through and adjust multiple colors and they would all show with the little dots underneath. All right, so the way to do this is to get most of the way there and then just do a little bit of masking. Every adjustment layer comes with a mask. Choose that layer mask. Now, the thing about mask, when you paint on that layer with black, it hides that layer. So we're going to grab a brush. Choose black as the foreground color. Opacity and flow 100. We just paint over the areas now that we want to preserve the original colors underneath. And if we look at this before and after, you can see it's really quick and easy to change the color of something now using the new adjust colors, which is really just the hue saturation with some nice new tweaks. So thanks for watching. Uh, drop a comment underneath and let me know if you learned anything new. And uh, if you want to know how to change the colors inside of an image in the existing Photoshop or Lightroom, check out this tutorial I have here. If you're new, welcome to the cafe. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my tutorials. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.